am a bread person. If you guys love bread, then this is your video, I am telling you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different than normal because it is going to be a cooking or baking video. I have been making these super easy, no need breads and rolls a lot recently and my friends keep reaching out asking for the recipes because I post it like on my Insta story or something and they're like, oh my gosh, give me the recipe to that. So I've been sending them, like texting them the recipes and all of that and I figured I might as well just film this video. This bread is so easy. It comes out delicious and crusty on the outside and warm and soft on the inside every single time. You really can't mess it up so I'm super excited to show it to you so you guys can use this to just have warm toast or make sandwiches with it. It's just so, it's so good for everything. Oh my gosh, dipping it in soup dunking it around in oil. It's just like the best bread. It's so good and you feel like so accomplished because you're like, I made my own bread. But really, it's so easy. So let's get into the ingredients and then we're gonna do this together. So for this recipe, you are going to need three cups of flour. I just use regular all-purpose flour. I don't buy bread flour specifically for this recipe. I'm sure you could use it, but just use what you have on hand, which for me is always just all-purpose flour. In addition to the flour, we're gonna need a teaspoon of salt. I just use table salt. A fourth teaspoon of yeast. I just use active dry yeast. I just buy the bigger container. I know you can buy it in the packets, but I just buy the bigger container and then it lasts honestly forever. And then an eighth of a teaspoon or a pinch of just regular white sugar. And then you'll also need one and a half cups of hot water. Make sure it's not boiling water, just make sure you get it from your tap. So I just turn on my kitchen sink until it gets hot and then I get a cup and a half of water. So for this part, I just like to use a spatula. So I'm just gonna dump the yeast, salt, and sugar in and then the hot water. And now we're gonna stir. And you'll see it comes together pretty quickly. Um, this dough is going to be a very sticky wet dough, um, but that's what it's supposed to be like. So we'll just want to make sure you get all the flour incorporated. Okay, now that the dough is all mixed together, I'm just going to grab some plastic wrap and then I'm going to let it do its thing on my countertop for about four hours. Um, you could probably do more or less, but I like to do four hours. And like I said, this is kind of what we're working with. You can really put this anywhere. You can put it on a table, you can put it on a countertop, but I recommend probably like a more cool place, not somewhere like your oven or your microwave that could be warmer. Um, and like I mentioned, we're gonna let it rest for four hours. While it's resting, you can really think about what you wanna to add to this dough. It is so flexible. You can really do a lot of different things. Um, one of my favorites is I like to mix in and put on the top everything but the bagel seasoning. That's super good. You could also do some mix-ins with um, rosemary, I know a lot of uh, rosemary breads are really popular. Olive bread's really popular, you can mix that in the dough. Um, so there's lots of things that you can figure out that you wanna do while this is resting and then once it's done resting and we start putting it all together, you could add those in if you want to. But for the sake of this video, I'm just doing it plain Jane style. So I will see you guys back here in about four hours to make some bread. Okay, so it's been about four hours and now I'm here to take you guys through the second half of this process, which honestly, it's just as easy as the first half, which is one of the reasons why I love this bread recipe so much. So what you guys are going to need next is about three tablespoons of flour, a board to work on. I prefer a board instead of my countertop because it just makes for easier cleanup. Clean I can just pick it up and put it in the sink a smaller bowl, some parchment paper, and then also a Dutch oven. This is the one that I use. So before we get started with the dough, I'm going to preheat my oven to 455 degrees, and while it's preheating, I'm going to put the Dutch oven in there so it gets hot as well. That's really important. Another optional item you might want to use is just a dough scraper. I didn't always have one of these, so I just used my spatula in the past. 
both have worked. Um, a dose creeper is definitely easier, but not 100% necessary. Although I do recommend it if you have one to use that. But if you don't, you can definitely make do with just your spatula. So I'm going to actually turn the camera angle so you guys can watch and hear what I'm doing. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with the dough. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just pull a piece of parchment off of here and put it on top of this bowl. The next thing I wanna do is flour my board. So that's where that extra about three tablespoons of flour comes into play. I just use this little uh, spoon that comes with my flour container. And I just make sure that I have a good coating of flour on the board and then I'll put some more on the dough when I bring it out. So after resting for about four hours, this is what the dough looks like. As you can tell, it's really loose and jiggly. It looks wet. That's exactly what you're looking for. This is a very sticky dough, like I mentioned, which is why using a tool like this comes in handy because then it sticks to that or doesn't stick to that instead of sticking to your fingers or something else. So I am going to use my spatula and pull this all out and just place it on top of the flour that we already laid down on the board. So this is not going to take very long. This is a no need recipe and I mean it. Um, but we are going to fold it a couple times to get it in the shape that we want. So I'm gonna spray, sprinkle on some additional flour on the top and a little bit on my tool. And now I'm just going to fold it over just a couple times. And also coating this in flour kind of helps with the crust when it is baking. So that's another reason why we do this. And that's pretty much it, honestly. So I'm gonna pull over this other bowl and then place it down in the bowl with the parchment paper, just like that. And then I'm going to just grab a kitchen towel and place that over this bowl for about 10 minutes um, while the oven finishes heating up. And then once we have the oven heated, I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna take this towel off my bread. Keep in mind, your oven may heat up faster or slower than mine. I think that mine heats up pretty fast. So if yours heats up slower, that's okay. You're just going to have to um, let it sit for longer, which there's nothing wrong in doing that. So what I'm gonna do now is put on some protectant, heat protectant gloves and take my Dutch oven out of the oven um, and put my bread in it. We can just pull the bread right out of the bowl, just like this. You can use the parchment paper and just place the parchment paper in your Dutch oven with the bread, which is, makes this so much easier. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is grab the lid of that, put that back on the Dutch oven, and then this is going to go in the oven covered for 30 minutes. Um, and after that 30 minutes, I'll be back and show you guys the next steps. It has been a half hour, and I'm so excited to take this bread out and show you guys what we are working with. So, I'm going to pull this out. And you guys are gonna see the beauty. And it's not even done yet. So, can you see that? Oh, look at that, that looks amazing. That looks like somebody in a bakery made it, but I just did it in my kitchen and I didn't even really try that hard. So, this is gonna go back in for another 15 minutes and that's really gonna get that golden crust on top, um, which is gonna give us exactly what we want. We're already kind of getting the crust, but now without the lid on, we're gonna be good to go. So this is going back in for 15 more minutes, no lid, and I will show you guys what it looks like in about 15 minutes. <laughs> it's the moment we've all been waiting for. The bread is done. As you guys can probably tell, I'm very excited about this. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's a beauty. Oh, so 
beautiful. Nice and crispy on top. You can still see some of the flour over here. So good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out of here and I'm gonna let it rest for a little bit on the cooling rack. And then once it cools for a little bit, we'll, we'll slice into it and I will show you the beauty that is inside. I've been anxiously awaiting this moment since really I started mixing the ingredients together. But now we are going to cut a slice of this bread and I'm going to try it out for you guys. So let me make sure that the bread is in frame. I'm just going to get a serrated knife. We're going to go ahead and get into it. Can you hear that crunch? I mean, come on. Does it get any better than that? I mean, it's still steaming. But can you guys see that? Mmm, that steam. This bread is fantastic. It is so soft on the inside and so crunchy and delicious on the outside. Every time. Every time. It is so easy to make and so good. You guys have to give it a try. The recipe will be down in the description box. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it and come back to watch it again if you ever need a refresher on how to make this bread. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is definitely new, something new for me, so if, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will definitely do more like it. I love cooking and baking and you know, it just brings me a lot of joy. So I hope you guys get to try out this recipe and get to get the same joy that I get from it. And yeah, please subscribe if you liked it and I will see you guys in my next video.